at a very early time, Abraham sent the sons of his concubine, Keturah, east. And knowing that they would not be what's called ritually pure, they wouldn't retain all of the requirements and, and you know, in his prophetic knowledge, he, he gave them certain books and not others. And so that when we look towards Eastern philosophy and Eastern understandings, both of India and of China, so that being um, Vedanta and Ayurveda, as well as further East Taoism and traditional Chinese medicine, there are strong influences from Jewish or pre-Jewish Hebrew Israel um, ideas and understandings, spiritual insights, and which are now being proven out as, as scientific insights. I'm speaking, I mean, just to say that, you know, um, the farming of animals is now taken very serious, the ethics of, of raising animals and, and uh, food quality. So I just want to look a little bit here at Vedanta. If you look at history books, it's known that in India, in thousands of years ago, before the invasion of the Aryans, they didn't have a written history. And this aspect of, of a non-written or non-coded past is, is related to the, to the Indian psychology and its relationship to time, um, as very different from the West. And prior to the, the, the writings uh, being accomplished, when Avraham sent his sons of the concubines east, they brought an understanding of a non-dualistic spiritual world. Now what this means is that in human psychology there's a tendency to externalize, to project the manifold complexes and create a cosmology that contains a multitude. But it's possible to reach a psychological state where it's seen that there is a superordinate function, sometimes referred to as the greater personality by Edward Edinger, fantastic second generation Jungian analyst. And that greater personality is like a singularity. So you can think of a multitude of complexes and then a singularity that brings them together. And this singularity is sometimes referred to in in uh, Christian centric thought or, or, or philosophical thought as the Lagos. And in Judaism, of course, it's, it's, a, it's the central uh, premise is, is the superordinate factor of this, of this one. And so in, in India, in, 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 the, in the East, you'll find non-dualistic Vedanta. And then, of course, there's dualistic Vedanta as a competitor to this. And Vedanta has a very strong, archaic, very old um, codification to it, mostly through oral tradition, but then published in books like the Upanishads. And the Upanishads have a very clear line to, to sort of what you would think of as, as what Abraham would have put forth to his sons. An understanding of creation, of the unity, um, the singularity, the singular presence, so to speak, that generates uh, creation, and then the organizational or mnemonics that uh, mnemonic devices such as fire and water and earth and you know the idea of agni and fire and that um, th that that uh, comprehension of creation is in in those spiritual texts and then on top of that the there's the way in which customs or traditions reflect 
the upper and the lower so that you have the spiritual ideas and then you have lower ideas related to the body such as food sanctity growing of the beard etc um, certain ideas about about the soul so that this this world is is right subordinated subordinate to the spiritual world which is superordinate so you get ideas of maya and, and illusion and relativizing the body and its needs in relation to spiritual goals and so there is certainly this this uh, profound connection there and obviously india is known for its spirituality and its um you know vedanta feeds into what became yogaism or, or yoga yoga philosophy and so it, it it's very confusing to sort out what this is but but if you look up hebrew uh, priest if you look up a hebrew man um, even one that lives in india and then you put up a brahmin you'll see the connection so that abraham becomes brahman and hebrew becomes hindu there's these etymological things regardless you'll see the covering of the hair you'll see the beard and the practices the the understanding of, of the quality especially when it comes to meat and meat consumption you know vegetarianism and emphasis on on the sanctity of food and and other you know bod bodily related things and that gets into the school of ayurveda which is also very ancient in india and of course like in all areas of the world in china as well there were in tibet there were shamans prior to the introduction of these ideas there was shaman culture which is just a loose term for intuitive people who looked for medicine healings and used stories to heal but the movement of Avraham, who was this genius beyond genius and, you know, the earliest of, of real Hebrew prophets, the introduction of his codified books, you know, books or codification of, of the psychology and the understanding of the author into the East really sets forth when you start looking at the sutras and, and, the, and the Upanishads. And when you get to the Bhagavad Gita, which is much later, you can see that the, um, the multitude has won out over the unity, over a non-dualistic view. And um, that is the important factor in human, in the world narrative here, is the multitude of complexes, right? The multitude and the way in which that warring and that war between more spiritual sides of the personality and more instinctual sides of the personality and the warrior and the poet and the mystic with the you know husband and i'm speaking in male terms and these different you know and the, and the feminine side too you know the the healer and the mother and the the dancer that these multitudes are compete against each other and are are competitive within the psychology of individuals and therefore externalized into a cosmology or into mythology mythology being a projection of this of this psychological state of a given culture so that in in world culture you'll see this this um, fraught and difficult task of organizing what a cosmology is and the uh, realization of a non-dualistic world is, is a um, perennial problem because it means a connection and an adherence to a, a word that is true. And that single word also connotes a, a judge. And that judge means responsibility. And responsibility is connected to consciousness, to a moral position, not only within one's own thoughts and one's own inner world, but also in the interpersonal and social world. And being responsible, being morally responsible 
is difficult. And that difficulty, that strain on the ego, that means the conscious part of the personality and the strain of that responsibility is something that's resisted. And so, just to tie in things here, the art, the Western art in relation to these spiritual ideas is a way of reconciling opposites. And so I talk about the the Jewish intellect, the black woman, the black dancer, and the Greek beauty ideals as opposites that need to be reconciled. Now we can also introduce the Indian uh, yoga, the Indian, the Hindu complexity. And there's, there's a whole uh, stream of complexity in this, in this mixing of, of cultures and, and influences in the world.